And one week from today, I'll be here giving the homily for the last Mass of Christmas Day. And I know two things are going to be true. One, I'm going to be very happy. And number two, I'm going to be totally exhausted. <laughs> that much I know. Well, that'll be here. So now, with only less, just less than a week ago, a week ago, just a week to go, I'm going to take a wild and crazy guess and say that being that you're, you're such people are always prepared that all the baking's done, right? No. All the shopping's done, right? Hey. All the gifts have been bought? All the wrapping's been done? No. How many people, raise your hands, if you have to still do baking or wrapping or cooking or buying or any of that? Oh, my Lord. What have you been doing all Advent? Don't tell me you've been praying. I'd want to believe it, but <laughs> maybe that's it. You've been spiritually preparing. That's a beautiful thought, isn't it? Well, it's going to be a busy week. You know, uh, if you believe what they say on TV or articles in the paper, they will tell you that this week, the week leading up to Christmas, is the busiest week for most families of the year. The most busiest. And I can believe that's true. I remember years ago uh, when my uh, nephew and niece were children and we all had the little kids in the family. And I had just, well, I started this before I got here. I did this for a number of years as the kids were growing up. Uh, is that uh, I found that there was no way, no way after doing all these Christmas masses, I could get in the car and drive either to Okemos or even to... Uh, Westland to, to be with the family for Christmas because all I'd want to do was sleep. I would just crash. It, it was totally unfun for me. So I made a deal with my sisters and my mother, and that is, let me host Christmas. I'll host Christmas every year, except I'm going to do it on the Epiphany, the day the three kings came. I'll have a dinner prepared. I catered it. <laughs> You bring all the presents for the kids, and we'll have a nice time. And I did. And it turned out, you know, my, uh, my sisters and my cousin Lorraine with all the little kids, they were all worried about it. They said, well, my mother loved it because she didn't have to cook. She said, yes. She was. But the sisters and the cousins said, well, we don't know. What are the kids going to think if they found out that Santa came to Uncle Joe's place two weeks later? So they're trying to come up with all kinds of different stories to tell them, you know, that Santa got his directions wrong, or we wrote a letter to saying that we're all going to meet at this time, so drop them off at Uncle Joe's on that day. Yeah, they did a lot of work worrying about this. Those kids arrived, saw those presents. Presents dove right in. <laughs> Santa could come on the 4th of July at Metro Beach if they had a present. They wouldn't care. I'm Don't worry about it. It's just if a piece of advice I give you for next year. It's a season, folks, and you can celebrate it on the Epiphany if you wish. And in fact, you'll find that the gifts are cheaper. <laughs> letting you know. But we still have a week of preparation to do. And let me uh, <coughs> give, you an, give you an option. <clears throat> and the option is from today. It's Gospel reading. It's from St. Joseph himself. When I was my first class, Father Chokel, he was a Sulpician priest, and he played a trick on all of us. He told us the first person, I was on the very first class, he said they can show me the first quote in the Bible where Joseph, the husband of Mary, said anything, I'll give you an automatic A. So we're all pouring through our Bibles. Well, the joke was on us. The Joseph, husband of Mary, never is quoted as saying anything at all. He was the silent husband. God spoke to him in dreams. Silent husband, like, like so many of you out there are. <laughs> All the women are going, no. <laughs> but, but he was. Um, I'm sure he spoke. I'm sure he had things to say. But he was a man who simply listened to the, paid attention to the dreams God sent him and acted. He was definitely a man of action. Well, there's something to be said for silence. You know, my 26 years out here, 
I've been in a lot of your homes. I've been there for luncheons. I've been there for anointings. I've been there for all kinds of this, all kinds of various reasons. And the overwhelming amount of time I've ever been in any of your homes, one thing is certain, that TV is blaring. <laughs> and sometimes they'll turn the volume down. <laughs> the TV's on, or there's music on, there's always something on. And with all the chaos and with everything that you're going to be involved with, between the baking and the cooking and the shopping that you're going to do this week, my advice would be this. Take a lesson from Joseph in his silence. Take 10 to 15 minutes out for the next seven days, 10 to 15 minutes out each day. Turn the TV off. Tell everybody in the house not to bother you and leave you alone. Under penalty of excommunication, I will do that for you. <laughs> so that you get that time with the Lord. You take that 10 to 15 minutes. It might not seem like a lot, but if you do it in silence, and if you do it when it's quiet, you'll find actually it will feel like a very long time. And you can do prayers, or you can just quietly listen, or just quietly talk to God. Whatever you want to do. And what I'm going to submit to you, that if you're able to do this in these seven days, two things I think are going to come true. Number one, those cookies are still going to get baked, those presents are still going to get wrapped, that shopping is still going to get done, all that's going to happen. And number two, you'll have taken some time out in your life to really get the Lord, to get to know the Lord Jesus a little more intimately, a little more closer, because you'll have reflected upon him in the stillness and in the quiet of your heart.